So I'm Jan, I'm from Slovenia, I work for Internet Society. But in, um, in my past, I actually started the not-for-profit organization called Go6 in Slovenia that is aiming to uh, provide, uh, to, to raise the awareness of IPv6 and uh, um, uh, implementation of IPv6. And as part of this organization, oops, don't break things. As a part of this organization, we also built a lab for IPv6. It's called Go6 Lab, where we were testing, and we are still testing lots of IPv6 um, development, lots of IPv6 products, uh, systems, uh, mechanisms, uh, new protocols, and things like this. But since, you know, years ago, we were quite busy with, uh, with, with testing all, all this stuff. But now, lately, it just became boring because IPv6 just works. And I know at least one person will not agree with me. It just, it, it just works. So now we are, well, it is getting better. So, okay. Um, what happened was that I was seeing less and less need for, for, for so much testing of IPv6, and then I got bored in my lab. And I said, okay, what should I do in, in my lab? It's three racks of equipment with all these servers, routers, and everything, and I know I, I need to do something with this, right? And I said, okay, what, what is this DNSSEC and Dane and TLS that uh, we are talking about more and more? And before I started um, uh, exploring the DNSSEC, it seemed to me that it is very complicated. Now, I've been in, in, in internet business for 20 years. I was running DNS servers. But this seemed to me a sort of like academic project that is so complex and hard that I will never understand. After I did it, now I, now I see how, how easy it is. Okay, first of all, the acknowledgement. I would like to thank Internet Society to, to let me spend my my wor working time for ISOC in my lab and doing all these tests and, and crazy stuff in my lab, so I'm able to, to put together presentations like this and, and talk to you about this stuff. Um, so, as I told you, I got bored in the lab. So, what, what did I do? So, I have this um, PowerDNS server that was mentioned today. Uh, does this work? Yeah. So I, I have this PowerDNS server, and it's used as a primary non-signed domains server. It was used before because I was serving for this, the non-signed domains, and now all of a sudden it, it became a hidden primary. I went with a little bit different um, 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 architecture than uh, uh, the, the, your TLD. You will see it later. And then I said, okay, let's use OpenDNSSEC signing platform. Why? So, okay, the primary reason why I started doing this was because Matai Smacking, back then he was working for NLNet Labs, and he was actually one of, one of uh, major coders for, for OpenDNSSEC, asked me at one IATF meeting, Jan, why is Go6.si not signed? And I could not provide him the good answer, because, you know, I, I said, yeah. Well, you know, the, the only thing that I could say is, you know, Matai this thing is enormously complex. I don't know how to do it, but I promise if you put together for me a document, deployment-oriented document, without all this academic uh, complex stuff, just deployment-oriented document that says install this, install this, uh, edit this file, this is how you add the domain, this is how you publish the domain, then I will do it. And actually that's why I chose the OpenDNSSEC because he wrote for me the instructions for OpenDNSSEC platform. Then I'm using bind 9 DNS servers as secondaries. I'm changing them to, to unbound these days. Um, don't ask me why, I just decided in my head that I need to change them, at least one, to have some sort of um, uh, di diversity. So the virtualization used was Proxmox 3.4. Now it moved to Proxmox 4.2. It's an excellent, excellent virtualization platform, and it's free. 
and OS templates. Um, so for OpenDNSSEC platform, I used Fedora 20 because it's very well supported and maintained there. And uh, Center 6 and 7 for the other things. So I put it in as a bump in the wire. I have two public primary servers and the concept should be here, but it's not. Cute, seriously. Okay, so there should be a, a picture of, um, of uh, um, a hidden primary, the uh, open DNS sec in the middle, and then two uh, uh, secondaries that are acting as primary and secondary and public facing uh, servers. Okay, I deployed it. I used this document that, that you can find on this uh, uh, URL. It's sort of like four or five pages. It's very simple very short and to, to, to the point. I was following this one and um, I deployed it. I signed the domains, I published the DS keys, done. Now what? Okay, my domains are signed. Okay, now they're they validating and I'm, I'm happy, I'm happily sitting in the lab. And I'm bored again. Okay, now what can I do with this? Okay, now I secure the zones. And I said, okay, let's, let's go into this Dane. So Dan was talking a lot about Dane back in days, and I was like, okay, let's test this thing. So I went and read. And actually I realized that Dane is just basically one additional record in my DNS zone file. It's called TLSA. I said, okay, how hard can it be, right? So what is the requirement? Of course, DNSSEC signed zone. You cannot do Dane without DNSSEC because the information you provide is not, is not verified if you don't do this. Um, then I was thinking, okay, should I do the experiment for the web or for mail? I said for the web, okay, for web, uh, you know, current browsers do not yet support it from the start by default. But there is an email server, it's called Postfix, that implemented Dane function. So I said, okay, let's, let's do it for, for, for email. Of course, back then, uh, so you need a Postfix server with TLS support that is, and uh, the uh, version of the Postfix needs to be bigger than 2.11. Of course, because then this one was the bleeding edge uh, 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 version. Back then we decided on 3.0.1 just because I could. Um, so, this is how TLSA record looks like. It's underscore port dot underscore uh, protocol dot host name. You see, this is my MX uh, server. And this is TLSA, it's a type. This is a selector, it's 301 or 311 or you need to go into the RFC to read what, what these numbers means. Uh, and this is the hash. This is actually the hash of the, of the certificate that my email server is offering you if you, if you try to send me an email. Um, here is more about Dane, uh, where you can uh, read. Why, why did the pictures don't work? Okay, so here it should be, um, a picture of, of two mail servers. One is sending mail server, one is receiving mail server, and two DNS server, servers. So when I, when I establish the, the um, enc encrypted uh, um, session, SMTP session, um, my, my server, that is sending server, receives uh, the certificate hash. It gets offered a certificate from the other side. Now, I ask for TLSA. So I would ask for the TLSA of the other server, and if I get it through DNSSEC and through Dane, then I can match. So if both are the same, this means that the other side is actually who they claim to be, so I can send an email, right? This is just verification. Okay, more, okay. So, and when I set it up, I needed to test it, right? if it works. So we, we have here um, from uh, T2, that's, that's a, a provider uh, 
services provider in, in my country. They're usually following what I'm doing in the lab and they are doing the same experiments on their network. So it's quite easy, whatever I'm doing, I'm talking to them and then I can test, we can test against each other. So I send them an email and I saw that on my email server, you get this verified TLS connection established. Verified means it was verified with Dane, okay? And then I said, okay, who else is using Dane? Of course, our friends from NL Net Labs. So I sent an email to Benno and I sent immediately uh, 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 an, another one saying, when you reply, can you please have a look in your log files and see if, if the whole thing uh, uh, validated to, 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 towards me? And you see that, that from, from their, their email server, it was also verified um, TLS connection to my server. So I said, hey, it works. So this is the Postfix config that you need to add or, or modify uh, if you want to use Dane. So it's not, it's not very hard. It's quite easy to do. Um, and in this way, if you publish the TLSA, you are, you are protecting your, your, your server so people understand that you are you. And you're also ver verifying other servers if they uh, decided to do TLSA. Okay, and now what? I was again bored in my lab. I set up Dane, right? And it works, it's easy. So I said, okay, am I alone on the internet doing this stuff? Or is anybody else using Dane to do this stuff. So I said, okay, where can I get the source of domain names? And I, I, I realized I can go and fetch the top one million Alexa domains. And I built a script. I'm not a programmer. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a networker, I'm a system administrator. So I used Bash. And it's a spaghetti incident of script. It's a complete spaghetti incident. But somehow, I, I made it work. After, after two weeks, I went back to, to change something, and I did not understand what I was doing there. But it worked. So that script sent an email to, to, to each um, uh, domain, uh, and the email address was test-dns-sec-dane. That's usually not an email address that exists, right? At each domain. After some tweaking, I, I got it right and it sent all the stuff, and then I analyzed the logs from Postfix. And um, yeah, we, we, we parsed the log files and here are the results. So what would you expect? How many of one million SMTP sessions were encrypted of any kind? Any guesses? Hmm? Okay. Nearly 70% of all attempted SMTP sessions were encrypted with TLS. How cool is that? How cool is that? Our NSA friends are not very happy at this moment. <laughs> uh, not very happy. Okay, the majority of TLS connections, 60% were established with trusted certificate. Can you imagine, people, people paid money for, 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 um, uh, for the certificate for their mail server. Um, and 1,382 connections where remote mail server announced TLS capability failed with cannot start TLS handshake failure. That means these people will never get an email from me. And now they are, they are com complaining, yeah? So when you say this is TLS, uh, this was not necessarily Dane, though. This was start TLS, TLS or something. So it was, it was a TLS connection initiated somehow. Yeah, or or anonymous, or untrusted, or trusted, or of any kind. So there is no there is no uh, establishment of of uh, authenticity or something like this. It's just right. just TLS. Okay. Do you did you find results of how many had TLSA records? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Oh, is that coming okay, up? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. Ben, you're I'm impatient. Ahead. All right. Yeah, you're impatient. Come on. All right. Here is your, here is your answer. So anonymous. This means just just a uh, just a key, actually, without signing. Uh, Hundred and nine thousand untrusted. That means self-signed certificate. 
was 167, trusted 410, and verified 128. Yay! I'm not alone in the world. I'm not alone. There is other people that is using this. Uh, previously, Dan said it's 1,000 plus mail servers out there. Now, probably it is. Back then, it was. And I probably did not find them all because they are not in top uh, Alexa domains. So, yeah, verified 128. So this is, this is getting better and better. And it's easy. Okay, so mail distribution. Google.com, they had 125,000 domains. Secure server, you see here TLS state trusted. Uh, no TLS trusted, most trusted. Uh, OVH.net, Yandex.ru, things like this. Uh, emailserve.com, Zoho Mail, Lollipop. These are big servers. But the problem is that none of these domains are DNS sex signed. That means no Dane for these people. This is uncool. This is really, really uncool. Okay. So then I, I did this. I, I put together the numbers. And then I got bored again. I was sitting there, rotating on my chair, thinking about, what can I do with this Dane? Okay, okay, uh, how can I how can I push it so far that it breaks? Let's see, let's see what I need to do that Dane will break. Right. So, let's check the malformed TLSA record. If you put in the DNS, the TLSA record, and as a hash, you just change one character. That means. <coughs> The hash and the search certificate does not match anymore. What will it do? It, it just said, untrusted TLS connection established to mail bad, because I, I put the TLSA as mail bad. Uh, Surfer certificate not trusted, and it did uh, just drop the connection. It did not deliver email, because it said, I don't know who you are, but you are not the one that you are claiming to be. So all good. This one worked. Um, then I started playing with signed and non-signed zones. So if a domain where MX record, and follow closely, because this is going to be a roller coaster. You will get lost pretty soon if, if you don't follow closely. If a domain where MX record resides is not DNS sex signed, just MX record, right? For example, if you, if you have MX record in your zone that is not signed, and you're pointing the, the MX record to the A or quad A record that is in go6.si zone that is signed, what happens? Or if TLSA record published in non-DNS uh, sec zone, so can trust data in a TLSA, so no, no verification. What happened? So here, here is a case, an example. Go6.lab SI zone is signed, so is MX.go6lab.si. So there is a TLSA for mx.go6lab.si, and domain sign.si is signed, and mx points to mx.go6lab.si, okay? Now domain not signed.si, these are just examples, they're not existing domains, I'm just using them as, as an example, is not signed and mx points to mx.go6lab.si. So I send an email to Jan at sign.si and Jan at not signed.si, and what happened? So when I send email to Jan at signed, it says verified. But when I send email to Jan at not signed, it says anonymous TLS. So the Dane process, it received MX record that was not signed, it just dropped, just exit. I don't trust this. And this raised all my flags. This was sort of like, whoa, hang on. Despite the fact that you can verify the endpoint, because Dane is the endpoint verification, not the path verification. You are not verifying it. You actually deliberately uh, decide not to verify the endpoint. Why? Okay, I understand that MX cannot be trusted. So that means like, you know, you are flying somewhere and uh, you do not trust um, uh, uh, um, the pilot to say we need to go to New York. But at least when you come to New York, you can verify that you are, you are in New York and not somewhere else, right? It's, it's a sensible thing to do. 
So I had a long discussion with uh, people that are implementing this at, 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 at Postfix. Um, and they actually fixed it. They, they, they implemented uh, it. So now in the latest version, um, if you would do this, it would not say uh, verified, but it would say trusted because the endpoint is trusted. It's not verified, but it's trusted. Okay, that's, that's their decision. Okay, um, so let's start to point the MX record from signed domain to the quad A record in non-signed domain and TLS say that is also not signed. This also didn't work because this shouldn't work. This shouldn't work because um, you cannot you cannot uh, verify the TLSA record that is not signed. And actually, with, with, uh, with, the, un, um, with the unbound, the uh, recursor, when I asked the recursor for the TLSA record in a non-signed zone, it said that it doesn't exist, despite the fact that the TLSA was there. I had to put Breaks, br br break DNS sec clause into the configuration. So the resolver started giving me back the TLSA records from the zone. Otherwise, it said, no, it doesn't exist. I, it's, it's so, it's so out, of the, the, out of mind that, that you are asking for TLSA record in a non-signed zone that I will not give you anything. It's, it's no there, go away. So this is how wrong this is. Okay, uh, so this was the Im improvement uh, from Viktor Dukhovny. Uh, he said that, um, uh, as you see, this was on sixth, um, uh, it was on third uh, January. So he was not he was not celebrating New Year's Eve uh, because of, of of me bothering him with this stuff. Uh, so and he implemented that uh, when a host has uh, MX host has a secure DNS TLS record even if the MX DNS record was obtained with insecure lookups. So now this thing work. And this is this is one of one of the cases where where you see the testing in 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 a lab and in a real world how to bring back the feedback to the ITF to protocol designers and to uh, implementers in 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 our software, uh, because otherwise, our, if if they don't know, if they don't hear from you, what is wrong with 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 the protocols, with the design, and with everything, then they will never be able to fix it. So please, do these things and re report back to software developers and to um, these people, so they will make it uh, better. All right. Then again, guess what? I got bored in my lab again. <laughs> so I said, okay, Dane works. So now let's, let's see this. Um, at, this uh, at this time, we, uh, we uh, uh, started supporting the, the Let's, Let's Encrypt initiative. We are also sponsoring them. Uh, that's why I have this cool T-shirt. Um, and I said, okay, let's try and put the Let's Encrypt signed keys and cover them with Dane. So you have double security, right? And, um, but the problem is that um, Let's Encrypt recommends using 2.1.1 and 3.1.1 records. Um, that means uh, that uh, 2.1.1 is a certification of the, of the hierarchy and the 3.1.1 is the, the digest of, of your key. But the validity of Let's Encrypt certificate is 90 days, right? And by default, the underlying key is changed when you're renewing. That means that I would have to change all the TLSA records in my, in my DNS zone. And you know, me being 20 years in, in this business and in operations, I'm lazy. Uh, by default. By default, the underlying key is changed. Yeah. So, if you plan to publish 3.1.1 TLSA, it's a lot of work, and I don't want to do a lot of work, right? Especially if I have lots of lots of domains. 
Um, using the 211 method leads to another issue, namely um, lack of DST root CAX3 certificate in the full chain uh, file from the, from the Let's Encrypt. And uh, so we need to fetch the DST root certificate and add it to, to the, this is my spaghetti incident. This is, uh, I fetch it with links, the source. I've, I fetch the, 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 the root certificate. I do some grab uh, and awk and sad magic. And then I add it to the, the full chain. It's quite easy. Okay. But at next certificate renew, by default, underlying key will change and 311 TRC record will become invalid. So labor wise, so you have a dash dash CSR option in Let's Encrypt Auto Client. Now this, these days is a third bot client and has the same, uh, same stuff. So in directory examples, there is generate CSR.sh, SH, and this back, back then, when I was doing this, was sort of like undocumented feature. But um, nevertheless, I generated my key. Um, and then if you run let's encrypt uh, auth dash dash CSR, uh, CSR dot there, and if, if you renew with this option, then the underlying key will never change. Or I need to decide, okay, now I will change the underlying key and I will do it manually with the human intervention and then go and change all the TLSA records and add new ones and, and things like this. But at least it's, it changes when I decide that, that it needs to change. So um, now we, we're using the same underlying key for automatic renewals. Um, and uh, of course, we add the DST root certificate to full chain dot pem every time we uh, we uh, change the the every time we renew. So I'm publishing the two one one and three one one TLSA records. That means that is verifying both both the keys. Here it should be a nice picture. Of, uh, of a Dane uh, verification dot that e that uh, Dan showed, and everything would be green. Okay, more reading. These are two blog posts where I documented the the process and everything that I was doing. Um, if you're interested in this stuff, go and read them, um, and send me feedback. You have my email. I'm more than happy. Uh, to, to, to hear some feedback or, or some, some questions. Um, if you have some ideas what to te test next, uh, send me an email and I will see what I can do. I have, I have, lots, of, I have lots of stuff um, that, that can be used in my lab. And this brings me to my last slide without pictures. I'm, I'm feeling like in old days of terminals and, and pine and all that. No pictures. Pictureless. You described it so well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, Thank you very much. End.